Hey guys, before starting the video if I could, I'd like to take 60 seconds to thank Asan Remote for sponsoring this video. With Asan, you will be able to control your PC with your phone whenever and wherever you like, and it's completely free to download for Windows, iOS, and Android. As you can see, I'm playing New World leveling my music without having to be at my desk. And what makes it even cooler is that you can fully customize your keyboard functions, which you can't even do while playing on your PC, allowing me to edit my display and pull out the specific keys for leveling music and place them wherever on screen I like to make hitting the notes even easier. For example, if you want to change the keys and the F5 key is missing, all I'll do is go into the keyboard settings and press F5. Then I can move it to where I find it the most comfortable to hit. I can even increase the size if I like. Then, if I'm wanting to run around and farm or do something like that, I can again change the view and also control this PC with a virtual mouse that really comes in handy. Asun also even supports gameplay up to 144 frames per second. And if you choose, you can upgrade to a paid membership unlocking even more features at a great price, even getting up to 40% off of your purchase. And if you want even more control over your gaming system, they've also launched Smart Plug to wake up your desktop remotely from your phone. So if you enjoy fishing, farming, or even leveling music from the comfort of your bed, or sitting outside in the sun, go download it and give this app a try. And what's even better is Asun has created a download code that will allow the first 200 subscribers who choose to download it access to 7 day free trial of the paid membership. So go download it now and give it a try. Hey guys, welcome to another New World video. In today's video, I wanted to start updating some of my crafting guides. I've had a ton of requests for this, so I figured it's time to get it done. I had put this off for some time, and my current guides are way out of date, I will admit. But the reason I hadn't updated them until now was because they make changes to the crafting system almost every patch since last summer. But now I think we're at a spot where I can update them in a more final, meaningful way. At least for now. So to begin this series, I will first make some updates to the armoring training in this guide. So, let's get into it. Armoring in New World is a very important skill. It allows crafters to craft, well, armor obviously, light, medium, and heavy, utilizing both the Outfitter Station and the Forge to craft the corresponding armor types. But that's not all. It also allows them to craft bombs that are important in both PvP and PvE environments. And bags. These bags are important not only for the increased carry weight that we all want, but also for the various perks they come with, improving your ability to harvest more in one session, get more faction tokens per mission, or even increase the amount of Azoth you get per bottle. Before I begin with the leveling, I want to cover a couple things that will make leveling much easier. This will of course apply to every stage. This way I don't have to mention it every stage over and over throughout the video. First, the town board requisitions. There was a time when they didn't really matter much, but with the changes over the past few months they provide a huge amount of experience for your armoring trade skill, at a very very low resource requirement. The only reason you can't fully max a trade skill in this manner is because the limitations built into the system. Town boards take 30 minutes to refresh, and getting an armor requisition from one is random. So no, you won't be able to level using town boards all the way. However, don't skip them or forget them either. Doing only a few will save you thousands of resources in the end, so it is always recommended. Another new system I need to mention is the perfect salvage system. I won't get into that. I have made a guide on this system and provided a link in the description to it, but the important thing to know here is that when training a trade skill, always craft in sessions, breaking the total of each tier into pieces. This way you will be able to utilize the potential scraps you receive from perfect salvages for free experience, and it is not a small amount either. I recommend checking out that guide. Now that we have covered that, let's get into the training. So for the leveling, so this section is going to be quite different than in the past. Generally with New World, we would break crafting down into sections, 0 to 50, 100 to 150, stuff like that. Then list the most efficient and cheapest way to reach each benchmark before moving on to the next tier. Well, with all these changes they made over the past few months, this has completely changed, at least as far as armoring goes. While recording this video, I created a new character, and I gave it 20k coin to get started and run some tests on just how more effective these new ways of leveling armoring would be that they've added. And after 25 minutes, I was 200 armoring, and I still had 6k coin roughly to spare. And that was buying everything outright from the market. So I can say with 100% certainty that we won't be grinding armoring anymore. This was just ridiculously easy. The numbers for materials that we used to talk about while leveling armoring was in the thousands. Like you will need 6,478 infused leather, 2,800 fibers, stuff like that. But now, with these changes, we are talking in terms of hundreds. I just can't even get over how easy this was. So, what you will be doing is quite simple. When you decide you would like to get started on armoring, just start at the top and make one of everything. And don't forget to make the heavy armor in the forge as well. With the 3 time crafting bonus you now get for your first time craft coupled with the 5% increased experience from the fort and monarchs, you will fly through the levels. What really cements this now though, is that there are so much more artifact armor sets. 
with the addition of the Empyrean Forge and the Ennead and even the Tempest, making one of each of these artifacts will give you a ridiculous amount of armoring experience for very little cost. You will however need 150 of each artifact item from these expeditions, but they generally run at a cost of 1-2 to two coin per, so not a heavy burden. I hit 200 armoring well before I even made them all, so you won't have any trouble. There are of course a few other tricks now as well. With the addition of the various event guaranteed 600 patterns that you can craft at zero armoring, this can be a quick but not cheap way to get a ton of armoring levels fast. I wouldn't however recommend this as a good way to level, because the cooldown materials are so much more expensive and you really don't even need many regular materials anymore. But if you're making them anyhow for your character, why not get more for your investment? The most important thing here is though, I didn't have to make a single item twice. I simply worked my way through the list and hit 200 armoring well before I ran out of first time crafts. It is quite astonishing really. I also want to point out for the potential newer players out there, often a recipe will call for tier 5 materials or whatever. For example, infused leather or orichalcum. Well, you can make this even easier if you click the drop down box and look at which rare material could replace it, like scarhide or azurite for star metal or cinnabar. This is often cheaper and easier to come by, so I recommend using these while leveling instead of the regular materials. In the end, I am quite happy to see that the days of making 3600 infused gloves are behind us. It was a huge waste of time, materials, and coin, and effort. Having it this way where you simply make one of everything just feels better, and is way, way cheaper, and you're required to invest a small fraction of what you did in the past. So now that you're at 200 armoring, what's next? Well, really a ton of work. First, you're going to need your armoring set. This is mandatory and will be necessary if you plan to craft 600 gear score gear. And of course, that was the plan when you began this adventure. The armor set, of course, comes in a tier four and tier five variant. But now the tier four set is only obtainable from the patterns found in the aptitude crates. The tier five set, however, can still be farmed. For the helm, you will want to farm Leviathan of the Deep, found in Mbutsi Superior in the Shattered Mountains. For the chest, you will want to kill the Siren's Fist, found in Forecastle Drift in Reekwater. For the gloves, the Siren's Guide, in Forecastle Drift in Reekwater once again. And for the pants, the Siren's Gun, and once again, Forecastle Drift in Reekwater. And for the boots, you will want to farm the Abiogenesis, found in Malevolence in Eden Grove. You will also need an earring with plus 5 minimum armoring crafted item quality. These have been changed slightly to drop less in the world. However, the Orichalcum Armoring Charm is very very cheap on the market and can be used at your outfitting station to craft your own earring by adding it as a desired mod. This earring can be low level, any quality, none of this matters. You will only be wearing it to craft and all that's important from it is the plus 5 armoring. Next up, trophies. You will of course want to have 3 major armoring trophies, one for each of your homes. These aren't quite as important as your armoring set, as they do not increase your max potential roll on crafting. They simply increase your minimum, so you can craft 600 gear score items without them. However, they will decrease your roll range, giving you along with everything else the desired 595 to 600 potential roll, decreasing your chances at rolling purples, and increasing your chances at legendaries. And finally the food. As an armorer, when you craft, you're always going to want to have spicy cabbage soup on hand, as these provide you with the needed plus 15 minimum gear score when you craft armoring items. Well guys, I hope this updated guide helps those of you who have posted on my old ones requesting it, and as things change I will keep these up to date, well, as up to date as possible. If you have any questions, please feel free to check my discord, I or someone there will always be available to help. And as always, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.